And we're going to change it up a little bit this week, and it's a subject I feel like we could talk a long time about with several different areas, and it's base running. You've been out in your games for a while, and we talk about hitting fundamentals, pitching fundamentals, and how all that comes into play. But in reality, base running is the most, one of the most important pieces of the game, and is also probably the area of youth baseball that is done the worst. We don't go over it enough in live situations and practice. And I'm going to point out just a couple key simple reminders that can improve your game on the base pass. Number one, knowing the number of outs is something we talk about all the time. But as coaches, we constantly give the number of outs to the players. Oftentimes, this goes in one ear, out the other. We're not really paying attention. So let's put the ownership on the player himself to give the number of outs to the coach. So how we do this and what we expect of our players is when they get to first base and we're taking the sign on the bag, I'm also giving the number of outs. Two hands, one, two, however number of outs that we have right there, I'm signaling it to the coach while he's giving the signs. Puts the ownership on the players and we know for a fact that they know the number of outs. Next, an area I feel like is really underutilized is knowing where your outfielders are all the time. This can play an important taking an extra base going from first to third, or certainly from second to home, which also factors into play our secondary lead. Even at the youngest levels of travel ball, most of the time we're leading off now. And I don't feel like players get in an aggressive enough secondary lead, and that leads us to not being able to take extra bases in two different areas. So I've checked the, number of the, the, I've checked the depth of the outfielders. When I get my secondary lead, that will allow me to not only get to second base or third base quicker, but be able to make the turn and take the extra base. How we're gonna take our secondary lead is this. Whether you're just listening to me in your car or whether you're watching us on the youthbaseballtalk.com version where you can see this video, I'll explain it so even if you can't see us, you can understand it. Once I go for my primary lead and the pitcher begins his motion to home plate, I'm gonna take two or three shuffles depending on the athlete and the level that you're playing at. You know, closer mounds, closer bases, you may only get two shuffles in. On a 60-90 field, some good athletes can get three. But those shuffles are gonna keep us in our athletic position. I wanna land in a 50-50 position, and you wanna see me gaining ground. Oftentimes when players do this secondary lead, they may take one shuffle, they may just cross over, but they're not really getting any distance or momentum created towards the next base. So if I want to take that extra base at some point, I want to make sure I'm aggressive at my secondary lead, I land in a 50-50 position that gives me a two-way go. A two-way go means we can read the ball off the bat down and immediately have momentum into the next base. But if the ball is caught by the catcher, the player swings through it or doesn't swing at all, I'm still in an athletic position where I can get back to the bag. We know there's more danger in getting further off the base. Catchers can backpick us. But if I stay in my 50-50 position at landing, I can quickly burst back to the back. And we always make those first two steps in either direction as hard as we can. If a catcher sees me lingering off the base and lollygagging back to my original base, more likely to draw a throw. But if I get into my athletic position, the ball's caught, and I'm hard back to the bag in my first two steps, he's not as likely to want to give us a back pick. The next way this can assist us is starting to read downward angle. And I want to do this from the youngest of age. Nine out of ten times, if we can get a jump on this read, reading downward angle out of the pitcher's hand on a ball in the dirt, we're going to be successful in taking the next base. This is something that we have to do in practice. As a coach, I get on the pitcher's mound, and I'm throwing balls to a live catcher or another coach, and I purposely will one-hop some of them in. Players need to read that trajectory out of the hand. We see downward angle that's going to hit the dirt, I can already take my jump towards the next base before the ball is even touched by the catcher. If we get this type of jump, we're going to be safe 9 out of 10 times, maybe more than that. Occasionally, you will get that catcher. It gets a clean one hop, and he's able to throw a guy out. But even our slowest of base runners, if we get this type of jump and read downward angle and take off before the ball hits the ground, we're more likely to be safe. So that's another way that that secondary lead can help us take extra bases. So, so recapping what we can do on the bases for today to help us in our next game, signaling the number of outs to our coach when he gives us a sign, puts the ownership on the players. Making sure I check outfielders so I know when I can take that extra base 
and when the guys are playing shallow and I have to be more cautious. We're trying to get a secondary lead that gets me momentum towards the next space. I'm covering ground as I do so. Two or three shuffles that allow us to land in an athletic position with a two-way go. And finally, out of that, we're starting to read downward angle out of the hand, always trying to find a way to take the next base. For this week's base running tips, I'm Justin Stone. Come check us out at EliteBaseball.tv. And until next week, we'll see you on the field.